students, welcome to the chemistry sessions. So I hope everybody is doing great. So in the last session, we have discussed about what we were discussing about the water pollution in a very great detail, right? So I hope you all have found out certain ways of managing water pollution. That means how you can use less of amount of chemicals, how you can, again, I'm not saying that you do not need to have daily bathing, right? But yes, you can just manage how you are putting, how you are dumping garbage into, into the water. That you should not do, right? Okay. Now, in today's class, I'll be dealing with the soil pollution, right? Now, in the soil pollution, the first and foremost thing which comes up is the cultivation process. The cultivation and on which the different kinds of chemicals are sprayed onto the plants in order to protect them either from the unwanted plants or either to protect them from the pests, right, from the insects. So basically, we'll be dealing with here pesticides and herbicides, right. So first is the pesticides which actually control the growth or kill the insects. All in all, we can say pests, right, all together. Whereas, if we talk about the herbicides, they are which kill the unwanted plants. What are the unwanted plants known as? Weeds, right? These are known as weeds. Fine. So, in earlier times, nicotine, you know, nicotine at the time of World War II, nicotine was employed. In fact, even earlier than that, nicotine was employed as a pesticide, right? Insecticide, in fact. Later on, DDT came into role. Dichloro, diphenyl trichloroethane, DDT. And this DDT, again, it was severely affecting our liver, severely affecting the aquatic life even, directly to the fishes, which entered into our food chain. And that was the reason by which now it has been banned. Now, certain alternatives are there, right? Many alternatives have been found out. And in that, I have got is aldrin, dialdrin, right? Then aldrin and dialdrin, these were the very comic, uh, chemic, these chemicals were so common that these were used as the pesticides. But again, they were toxic to human beings. Toxic, non-biodegradable, again, entering into the food chain. So basically what, how they are harmful is, they are insoluble in water, non-biodegradable and yes, directly entering into our food chain. You know how they enter our food chain? From the fish, the smaller fish consumes the larger fish, the larger fish is consumed by us and then finally it enters into the food chain, right? And that is how the non-biodegradable, the insoluble components, in fact, the very toxic metals, they enter into our food chain, they enter into our body. From the fishes, to the plants, to the human beings. That is how the channel goes. Clear? Okay. So that was about the pesticides. And yes, what is the major thing about this pesticides? The major drawback is the pests develop resistance. You know, the pests tend to develop resistance towards these pesticides and thereby making them ineffective. Here comes the herbicides. Now, the research has been shifted more, more, to, more towards the herbicides. That means, how to kill these unwanted plants which will indirectly can kill many of the pests. So, these unwanted plants, again, Herbicides are employed in that I have got is sodium chlorate. Uh, these are some of the very commonly used, right? Sodium chlorate is there. Sodium arsenide. And this is NaClO3. This is Na3AsO3, right? So these are very common ones. Again, herbicides serving toxic to the human beings, carcinogenic, 
they are by affecting us. So that means further developments are there going on which actually finding out the alternative ways to kill the pests, to kill the unwanted plants and not affecting us. But yes, still the research is going on. We are employing different, different better methods for it, right? And yes, all of these things along with the water during the rains, they come off and lead to the water pollution altogether, not just the water pollution, but the soil pollution also. Directly, the soil is also getting affected. Its quality is degrading, right? And yes, that is how it is affecting the plant growth as well. Clear? Okay. So, that was something about soil pollution. I hope that is clear to you. Now, let's move on further. I have got something for you to tell about uh, industrial waste this time. Industrial waste. Now, this industrial waste is also of two types. One is the biodegradable, the uh, other is non-biodegradable. Biodegradable. The other one is non-biodegradable. Can you tell me what all are the industries which produce biodegradable waste? It's the cotton mills, right? Cotton mills. These are the paper mills, right? Food processing units, food processing units, etc. So, all of these they produce biodegradable waste. You can very well see cotton paper. These are directly earned, these are directly got from the environment. Now comes up the non biodegradable industries can be steel industry, can be iron industry and so many are those, right? All the kinds of chemical industries which are included, fine. So basically what is happening? This industrial waste has to be managed. The main thing is the management only. How can we manage this industrial waste? So first of all, what I would like to discuss is about the steel, right? In the steel industry, steel industry, there is one waste called the slag which is produced, other is fly ash, right? So we need to, we need to utilize these waste very judiciously so that it does not directly affect us, directly affecting the environment and it is also used up, right? So what they do is, they try to mix them in cement industry. They try to mix them in a cement, utilize it. So the waste is also getting utilized and it is not that much affecting us, right? So it's again used for making houses, building houses and roads and etc, right? So that is one of the uses, one of the judicious use of waste. And of this industrial waste, there are a lot many techniques that have been developed. What all are the techniques? One is of green fuel and you know, from where this green fuel has been produced? It is produced from the plastic materials. And that petrol is actually unleaded and has high octane number. Any petrol having high octane number is a good quality petrol, which again has come up from the plastic is known as the green fuel. And one more thing is that I would like to tell you over here is the garbage, right? You know, garbage, can be directly used to have, to produce electricity. How? Garbage, it is actually dumped, right? It's mixed with the water, garbage plus water. Then bacterial decomposition. It is bacterially decomposed, right? And what happens is, this bacterial decomposition produces methane which can be directly used to produce the electricity and that is how our demands have been met because electricity, the power cuts, it's very common these days. So electricity can be produced from the methane which is coming indirectly from the garbage only, right? And that is how you can judicially utilize these things. And yes, from here comes the waste management, right? Waste management. 
how can we manage the waste so basically first of all you should know the difference between biodegradable and non biodegradable waste that is how you can you do not just go on and dump all the things right you should have a container for biodegradable and non biodegradable separately right you are the chemistry students you know that which material will be biodegradable which will be non biodegradable so you should have that first of all the difference you should know and after that again the dumping techniques should be somehow that again if you have got some biodegradable degradable material you can have some pits right nearby in your houses or maybe in lawns again to completely degrade that material which will not be again affecting the environment that much and your work will be done right composting pits are there so that is how the waste management is actually we have to collect the waste its disposal again a very big issue so that is how you should be very well aware of what all activities are happening and in fact even if you just take a step ahead so that you can manage the waste properly that will also be affecting somehow to the environment you can something you can do something for your environment and can lead others as well in this particular thing right okay so that was the waste management what are the day to day activities which the green chemists have employed to better our environment so from here comes up a concept of green chemistry which has been developed now what is this green chemistry green chemistry is basically the manufacture of chemicals see chemicals are very important for our lives you know that on daily basis you use chemicals and in the why the chemical industry so many chemical industries are running because again they are very very beneficial for us these chemicals are directly utilized in our daily lives you know this right so basically some of the chemists some of the researchers throughout the world in fact not just some but many of them have been involved in this concept of green chemistry here they convert they actually employ such techniques which will be beneficial for the environment and the chemical is also formed right so that is why eco friendly chemical reactions they carry out right and research is still going on in this field of green chemistry is an evolving field that means we can convert the by products also the by products of the reactions right of the chemical reactions can be converted into value added products right which can again be beneficial for us let's say for an example you know the bio degradable waste the biomass actually right all those rice husks right all those cultivation thing right so we have got so much huge amount of husk rice husk and that is converted into biomass that is actually a biomass right biomass getting converted into electricity we know this and you know several methods have been developed that this biomass is getting converted into alcohol also and some of the very very efficient biofuel some of the very efficient bio value added products as well so that is what the green chemistry leads us to right it's a healthier a better environment an eco eco friendly environment right and one more thing that i would like to tell you is some of the very common contributions in day to day life by these green chemists see first is for dry cleaning purpose dry cleaning purpose so in earlier times it was tri uh, it was tetrachloroethane right it was tetrachloroethane which was used for dry cleaning of the clothes right and this tetrachloroethane it was very harmful right it was harmful for the ground water it was actually polluting the water out fine and that is why now the scientists have developed the research and has replaced this from this tetrachloroethane to liquefied carbon dioxide which is used now for the dry cleaning purposes this liquefied carbon dioxide is a better way 
which will not pollute the water non polluting this is non polluting this liquefied carbon dioxide and yes in some of the purposes now hydrogen peroxide has also been used where less amount of water will be required less water used see how the science has been developing from this particular harmful chemical we have reached on to the liquid carbon dioxide and then the use of hydrogen peroxide which actually uses less water and is eco friendly right and yes one more thing for bleaching purpose for bleaching purpose also this hydrogen peroxide is employed again being an eco friendly it will utilize less of water and giving the results quickly yes and we have got different different reactions also where the scientists are again researching to employ better ways so that these are eco friendly and will consume less of the chemicals are cost effective and eco friendly clear and yes from this note we complete our chapter this particular environmental chemistry i hope this today's session you have got it very well in the next session we'll be dealing with the questions related to this chapter so you need to revise this chapter once again so that we can go go through these go through those questions very well have a nice day